My friends, my channel is under attack yet again. Over the past two weeks, YouTube has unsubscribed hundreds of viewers without their knowledge and sandboxed my channel to keep me from getting out information and Hollywood rumors like the one I'm about to present. Please check to make sure you are still subscribed, and if you are not subscribed, please help us to fight this by subscribing to this channel and even becoming a channel member, where you will get weekly uncensored and demonetized videos where I speak my mind candidly, free of censorship. Go to youtube.com slash overlordDVD, click the join button there, and help us keep fighting to save pop culture. Thank you, my friends, and now, on to the video. My friends, I'm hearing from multiple sources over the course of several weeks that the failure of the Acolyte has shaken things up at Lucasfilm and big changes are rumored to be in the wind. Now, I'm not even sure why I'm doing this video because at this point, it doesn't feel like it even matters what happens at Lucasfilm. It's like hearing, hey, we caught the murderer and all that swell and Jim Dandy but our loved one is still on a slab in the morgue, so what does it matter? Nevertheless, my Hollywood spies have received a string of reports from various sources that the failure of the Acolyte is a turning point at Lucasfilm, a window of chaos where no one knows exactly what to do and all things are suddenly possible. They say an alcoholic has to hit rock bottom before they can admit they have a problem. Well, according to sources, the Acolyte was that rock bottom. It's so bad, it simply cannot be ignored, and I'm told even investors loyal to Iger are getting upset and asking too many questions to dismiss. I have a wealth of information from my Hollywood spies to present to you in this video, my friends. A series of updates in sequential order, with the latest update at the end, so please watch this one all the way through. In the past, there have always been rationalizations and extenuating circumstances to explain away Kathleen Kennedy's constant failures. Yes, The Last Jedi destroyed the Star Wars universe as we know it and drove a huge chunk of the fandom away, and yet, the bean counters pointed out, it made money. Same with Rise of Skywalker, I mean Rise of Palpatine. It made less money than The Last Jedi, but it still made money and the bean counters shrugged. Solo lost money. But Iger helped old KK out with rationalizations. Hey, there's Star Wars fatigue. We're giving the fans too much Star Wars, so we need to cool it for a while and keep Star Wars out of movie theaters, which will also have the happy side effect of preventing the public from seeing diminishing box office receipts and realizing how badly Star Wars is in decline. Disney hides rating numbers for Star Wars shows on Disney Plus as best they can, conceals the tune-out times like cats conceal turds in litter boxes, but the simple fact of the matter is, under Kathleen Kennedy, Star Wars is a moribund brand. Jon Favreau tried to apply the shock paddles to save it, and would have succeeded at the end of Mando Season 2, but alas, Kathleen Kennedy unplugged the machine and sabotaged that rescue. So behold the quintessential devil in these matters, Kathleen Kennedy herself. She has gotten away with her metaphorical crimes, but if what my sources are telling me is correct, the Acolyte has changed everything. Cancelled after only one season. Just like the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel got cancelled after only 18 months of operation, both pet projects of Miss Fade Out. The Acolyte was such a spectacularly public failure, not even Disney could ignore it in the name of the agenda. And now I'm told in a recent slew of reports, big changes are allegedly coming to Lucasfilm. Oh, please. We've heard this song before. It's from an old familiar score. I know it well, that melody. Kathleen Kennedy has been a window seat. When's the last time we saw or heard from that Grinch-like figure? She's still drawing a salary. She's just off in schmucking Whoville, stealing candy canes from babies and shit. What difference does it make? The difference, Harvey Cthulhu, lies in who it is rumored is taking over control of the Star Wars franchise, and if this is true, we might actually wind up getting some decent Star Wars. Too little too late, yes, but even a Pyrrhic victory is a victory of sorts. I are talking hope, Doomcock. May I remind you that hope floats, just like certain turds? And honestly, after Kenobi, after Acolyte, 
after Ahsoka, after Book of Boba Fett, after the sequel trilogy, what possible damn difference could it make? Good questions, O Skull of Calderon. Let me share what I've been told. At this point, I must state that what I'm about to share with you is information provided to me by my Hollywood spies, but since I cannot personally confirm any of this, I am presenting it as unverified rumor, and I ask you to please take it with a grain of salt. So here are a few conversations my Hollywood spies sent me. On June 23rd, I received this update from my Hollywood spies, quote, So as you know, we've told you there's something major on the line if the acolyte fails. And it is failing. Up till now, we've been working under the belief that John may be the recipient of the Star Wars mantle, but all of our sources have said basically the same things. John is happy doing his own thing and playing in his Mando sandbox. Okay then, if not John, then who? This has been our question and why we had our thoughts we never vocalized them. Well, we may finally have a clue and it confirms our thoughts. It may in fact be the writers and directors of Andor who inherit the Star Wars mantle. This is very new information, but we believe we are on the right track. Also, we are not saying this is a good or bad thing, just letting you know what we're hearing." Unquote. Well, I took that report with a grain of my own salt, though I did find it interesting. Other than John Favreau's Mandalorian, the only other watchable Star Wars, in my opinion, was Andor. So. This is not the worst idea, in my opinion. Then on August 12th, I received this update, quote, We will stand by, we will believe that KK is going when we see it, and let's be real, her leaving probably won't make much difference now anyway. As I've said allegedly, KK was ordered to stay away from D23. Allegedly, Dave has fully taken over. She's not going anywhere, but she's supposed to have no say in anything. Now, according to our sources, the Ray movie is off the table, and from what we are being told, Daisy Ridley may not be in any kind of role because she is sick. We're still looking into what exactly this is. If true, we will let you know. Also, it seems Disney has roped in the guy that directed P Hard Season 3 to do a project. We have some information on this, but we are still working on it. We saw a Skeleton Crew trailer. It's literally the Goonies in Space. Frankly, I'd rather see a movie Pigs in Space, unquote. Man, Dave Filoni allegedly worked on Acolyte alongside Leslie, so his fingerprints are all over this crime against Star Wars 2. I don't see how he's just managing to escape blame. Yeah, I know, I hear you, Harvey. But as I said, it's clear there's a power vacuum at Lucasfilm and various parties are jockeying for position. On August 20th, I received this update, quote, is Disney slash Bob really about to throw KK under the bus? As I'm sure you've heard, Acolyte is officially canceled. As we told you, there were consequences if the Acolyte didn't perform well, and it didn't. Personally, I speak for the whole team, even if Disney tries to right the ship, do they have any idea just how many people are gone? How hard they're going to have to work to get even a fraction of the audience they themselves pushed away? One show is not going to make a damn difference. It's going to have to be multiple shows and movies, and then the shows and movies in question are going to have to be damn good." Unquote. Yes, my spies share my healthy skepticism, it seems, and sometimes their skepticism even upsets our sources. In this most recent update, a source tells them Kennedy may be screwed at last, and here's how the exchange went verbatim. Quote, here we go again. We don't believe this, but in order to keep you in the loop, here you go. According to a source, KK will be out by next year. To be clear, we laughed when we were told this, and the source became very upset, and this is what the source told us word for word. Source. I know you guys have been told this before, but this time, KK had her name on the line. My spies replied, Okay, fine. What do you mean she had her name on the line? The source replied, I've told you the Acolyte was already made and ready for prime time before Disney reshot it all over again. That being said, Disney was going to just let it collect dust. But KK just wouldn't let Acolyte go. Her and Bob came to an agreement that KK slash Leslie would have full control, do whatever they wanted under the circumstances and that if it flopped, she wouldn't be able to have any more influence or say-so 
on or about Star Wars? My spies answered, yes, we remember, and we have been told similar stories from other sources. The source replied, well, she lost. In case you missed it, KK's name was in none of the credits for Star Wars at D23 and all. Future Star Wars movies and shows are being stopped, except Mando and Andor. My spies answered, well, we'll report this, but we stand by our opinion. We'll believe it when we see her walking, unquote. So what do I think about this rumor? Well, it is true that she was absent from the credits of Star Wars Project screened at D23. But that said, Kathleen Kennedy is completely irrelevant at this point. Notice how we haven't seen her or heard from her in a long time. That's because, like a cobra that's been biting snake charmers all day, her venom is spent and the damage is done. She was going to retire at the end of her contract anyway, so I think it's fair to say Kathleen Kennedy took her best shot at remaking Star Wars in her image, and in that plastic surgery, the patient died on the table. But at least Kennedy failed in her primary objective, and indeed, her failure may actually have stirred Disney out of its woke fever dream. Now, Disney is looking around desperately, trying to figure out how to fix this mess. I have subsequently received reports that the creative team behind Andor are the ones emerging from all this chaos as the most likely inheritors of the tarnished and broken Star Wars crown. I personally liked Andor a great deal. I felt it was smart and well acted for a refreshing change, and my only complaint about it was, where's the fun? Remember when Star Wars was supposed to be fun? Well, only time will tell how all this plays out, folks, but in the meantime, it appears there may be a faint blip of a pulse for Star Wars. I'm skeptical about all this, folks, just as my Hollywood spies are. We've all heard this song before, but then again, it seems perhaps the Acolyte's failure was so spectacular, with Disney's stock getting lower and lower and desperation climbing higher and higher, maybe this time, doing nothing isn't an option Bob Iger can live with. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha 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 